CataractCoach.com. CTR placement and traumatic cataracts. How can you ensure accurate placement within the capsule bag? So the patient had some trauma here. And you can see it looks like some zymoid dehiscence, maybe on the left side of the screen there. So the surgeon's making the main incision on the paracentesis, going in here with some viscoelastic. And now it's hard to tell. Is that just like a lamellar cataract? Or is there a gap in zymoid support? In fact, where's the iris? Is it that dilated? Is it a traumatic medriasis? Let's take a look here. There looks like some zonulopathy. As the surgeon's getting the rexus completed, there's a little bit of a laxity in the anterior lens capsule. So completing that rexus, that looks pretty good. And now let's see what's next. Loosening up the cataract a little bit. Okay. A little bit of hydrodissection there. And now, yo, oh, CTR going in. Maybe that was viscoelastic to expand the area under the anterior capsule rim. Maybe that was a little dispersive viscoelastic. So here we go, advancing. Here comes the CTR being placed manually. And let's see how it goes in. You, know, you need to make sure it gets under that rexus. That's obviously key. So I like the chopper there to push it down a little bit or guide it. That's important. You got to get under that. And you want to do this circumferential motion. And it's going around pretty nicely. So that kind of helps delineate where is the capsular bag equator. So now you know this edge of what you see, the, the nuclear opacity, that's just some inner nuclear layers that the, the epinuclear shell is probably clear in this patient. And that's why it looks like that. So very nicely done. So yeah, the question is, where's the iris, right? Is this a traumatic medriasis or just patient who dilates really well? Or was there some other issue? So again, chopping up the cataract here, taking this out. That should be pretty straightforward. I'm just keeping an eye out on that CTR. I want to make sure that CTR like doesn't move much, right? Because that's just that's just a good indication of where's the capsular bag equator that delineates it for you. And so nucleus removal is pretty easy, not a very dense cataract, one of these you know, traditional traumatic cataracts, probably in a young person. So taking out that cataract pretty easily, there's the nucleus removal. And now we can examine more of the capsular bag in detail as we do the cortex removal. So that came out pretty nicely. Here's the IA probe going inside the eye. And it looks to be pretty reasonable. So maybe only a little bit of zonal weakness. I think you're going to be okay just getting your regular lens in the capsular bag here. Not much of an issue. Remember, for cortex removal with the CTR in, you're going to have to do more of a tangential or circumferential approach, not really a radial approach in order to be efficient with that. Hey, did I tell you about our website? cataractcoach.com. I know you love YouTube videos, so do I, but we have so much more. Do you know there's a free PDF book about how to learn cataract surgery? There's a free curriculum series, 25 parts long. There's a free podcast that you should be listening to, and of course, all the social media stuff. You owe it to yourself to check it all out. You're missing out if you don't. So cleaning up the caps are back here. Uh, good job. I do uh, you know, a little bit less clean up here. In a patient like this, you're almost certainly a young patient going to get uh, PCO, you're going to need to do a YAG laser at some point. So clean up as much as you can, but I wouldn't go overboard, especially in a case where you're suspecting some zonal laxity and there's a history of trauma, etc. But now you can see that's done beautifully. The looks like the, the CTR edge you can still see there. So maybe there is some zonal laxity in that one area. Maybe it is decentering because when you put the viscoelastic, it looks better. Now here comes the lens 7L rule. Now, I like the idea of putting a three-piece lens here because there's going to be more options for placement. Now, in this situation, you may want to place the haptic in the sulcus and then get the optic captured through the rexus. That may be a great option as well. Let's take a look here. Dialing that in, where's it going to go? Is it sulcus with optic capture? Maybe it is. In fact, I think that is what we got there. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's a great option. So now with the CTR in the capsule bag, that's going to keep that capsule bag open and prevent some phimosis there. And then also with the IOL, haptics and the sulcus optic capture through the rexus, well, the nice part in that is that it's going to help obviously prevent phimosis and keep the IOL well-centered. And so this may be a better option for more significant zonal damage is to put this three-piece lens, again, haptic sulcus optic capture behind the rexus. And the patient can have a beautiful outcome. Now, if there was significantly more zonal laxity, you may have to put some sort of other device like a capture retention segment in order to suture that to the sclera or do an alternate term type of fixation for an IOL. Here at the end of the case, looks pretty darn good. Cleaning up uh, everything, sealing up the incisions, maybe a little extra squirting around there. Patient's going to have a beautiful outcome. Thanks for watching. And again, be sure to check out all the good stuff I have for you on the Cataract Coach website. Follow us on social media. There's the Instagram. There's the LinkedIn. You know where that works. Thank you.